Oh man, I'm tired. This is kind of, this is going to be a lot. All right. Overlays are pretty important in the process of making games. They're used for making anything from menus to player UI. But before I show you how to add overlays, I want to go over a few issues you may run into with UPBG 0.3 and higher versions. If you're used to earlier versions of UPBG, like 2.79 and lower, you will notice you can't overlay scenes specifically. Overlays are done exclusively with collections now, and this new system is not the greatest if I'm going to be honest. You can only overlay one collection at a time. Trying to overlay two collections will result in the breaking of the first overlaid collection. Man, I'm going to be saying collection a lot in this video. Another thing to note is that if an object you have running the overlay nodes is deleted, it will most likely crash the game. So it's a good idea to attach all overlay nodes to the camera. From my experience, the best thing to do is to use overlays for things like health bars and anything that will be permanently on the screen. Things like menus and pop-ups, just make a new collection and put all of your menu assets in it. Then place the menu assets in front of the main camera. It's a good idea to turn the shadow mode to none for all UI asset materials. Then using logic, toggle the visibility of the collection. Open a new scene and smite the default cube into oblivion. Then reset the default camera rotation to zero and rotate the camera on the X or the Y axis 90 degrees. Then go to a new location in the scene and press 7 on the numpad to enter the top down view. Then add a new camera and drag it up a bit. Set it to the orthographic view. This will make everything flat. Now just place your assets where you think they look good. The art design is totally up to you. With everything placed, go back to the main camera and open the logic brick window. We'll be using logic bricks for this part since the logic bricks have more options for overlays. Oh my goodness, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> so if you hear crackling, that's what it is. It's just rain. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the video. With everything placed, go back to the main camera. We'll be using logic bricks for this part since the bricks have more options for overlays. Add an always sensor and a collection actuator. Connect them together with an AND controller and set the collection type to overlay. When you play the game, you should see your HUD. This is great, but let's add another collection for an escape menu. Make a new collection and give it a unique name. Then, just build your menu. Make sure it's at the same angle as the camera. With the main camera selected, open the logic node window and make a new logic tree. Then call it menu. With the main camera selected, give it a property called menu as well. Then set it to integer. Back in the node tree, add two evaluate property nodes and two set collection visibility nodes. Select the menu property on both the evaluate nodes. Then select the person icon to reference itself. For the visibility nodes, select the menu collection and set one to visible and the other to not visible. When the menu property is equal to one, set the collection to visible, and when it's equal to zero, set it to not visible. Now let's activate it with a keyboard. Add a key down node and another evaluate node, then connect them together with an AND controller. Then select the self icon. For the key, leave it on tap, and then select the key you want to activate it with. I'm going to be using the tab key for this project. Now add two set property nodes and a timer node. Connect the first set property to the AND node, then set it to integer with a value of one. Connect the timer to the done socket of the set property. For the time, set it to 0.01 seconds. When the timer elapses, set the second set property value to 2. This will act as a buffer for the menu, otherwise it will turn on and off at the same time. Now we need to set the property back to 0 when we press the key again. Duplicate the first four nodes and move them down. Set the evaluate node to a value of 2 and the set property to 0. With that, you can run your game with the ability to open and close your menu. If you found this video helpful, try watching one of these videos. I also cover a wide range of these Blender game engines. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.